that God would help us. I am scared to death. It's like my first Sunday ever being here. And um, I want you to pray this morning that God, um, He would help me. And before I preach, I want to pray this morning. And I know that's all different, but um, it's important today that I follow the Lord to the exact T this morning, that I don't um, veer in one direction or the other. So let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Fathers, we come to you once again, Lord. I come to you this morning, um, God, just as humbly as I know how, God. Um, Lord, just spreading out my life and my heart, God, and, and just asking you to take me today. And Lord, let me um, be a mouthpiece for you, Lord. Not for my honor or not for my glory, but Lord, I pray that you'd take me. Uh, Lord, as feeble as I am, I pray that you'd take me and that you'd clean me and that you'd use me today, Lord, to share this message. Lord, I love you and I pray the hearts and the lives of your people today, Lord, that we would take your word today and that, God, we would apply it and that we'd try to live by it. Lord, I love you this morning with all my heart. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you got your Bibles. Want to turn with us today um, to the book of Judges, chapter 2. I um, have some scripture today I want to read today in your hearing. And um, as you could tell, I'm not the normal me today. Um, I am so heavy hearted, I can't hardly breathe. And so I want you to pray this morning um, that I could get some relief. I'm going to as soon as I can get done with this. I'm going to get some relief. And so um, I don't know, anybody in the building today got a television? <clears throat> yeah, anybody in the building today got a radio? Anybody in the building today mad? about what has happened this past week in our country, about what is going on in this world today, about um, things and the way they're going and the direction they're headed. And um, it seems like that um, there ain't no end in sight. I don't know about you, but I'm upset. And um, uh, this past week I was traveling, and, and yeah, this is a message. This, this is a hard message, I'll be honest. This is a message that um, goes directly to you and I. And um, anyways... Um, I just happened to be the lucky one to get it. So anyways, you all pray. Um, anyways, traveling this week, um, I saw on the news about all the people that were getting shot and about all the people that were fighting and about all the people that were protesting. And, and everybody in the building knows about all this, right? This ain't nothing new. So um, during all that, I was flipping through the channels in a hotel and um, I saw one of our um, candidates, our presidential candidates, and um, on there... Um, all that was really happening was him slamming the other one. And so um, I began to think about that a few minutes, and I thought, you know what, this country is in a mess. And I began to think about that a little more, Keith, and uh, for the first time. Now, I've always been concerned about our country, don't get me wrong, but for the first time it hit me down so deep that I just felt my knees and tears just started rolling uh, from my eyes. It hit me deeper than I'd ever been hit in my life to realize and to know about what kind of shape that our country's coming to and, and God's people and if we don't um, pray and if we don't get serious about this thing and um, the condition that it's in and where it's headed, I, I know what's going to happen. And so um, God gave me this message. Now I want you to pray Judges chapter 2. I'm going to start reading verse 8 now. And this probably is not very familiar scripture to a lot of you, but um, this is the Word of God, um, just like it is from Genesis to Revelations. It's the Word of God. And um, you don't got to worry today about one thing. You don't have to worry about me preaching to you something that's not in the Word of God. I've uh, not did that in four years, haven't, so I'm not going to start today. But um, I want to share with you some things today, and hopefully we can um, be better men and be better women. And, you know, right here in Granger County, this is the field that um, God has chose for me to work in. And this is the field, Keith, that He's chose you to work in. And um, so this is where we have to do our work at, right here in Granger County. Now, um, I know that God's work goes on other places, and it goes on other places through you. But um, let's look right here at home today, and let's look at what's going on around us. Let me start in chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 8, the book of Judges, and it reads like this. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance, and I can't say the next word, in the mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill of Gaosh. And also all the, congreg all the generation that were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord nor yet the works which he had done in Israel. Now that's all I'm going to read. I want you to think about verse 10. It says, And 
Also, all the generation, that meant everybody, okay? That meant everybody of the generation of Joshua, the children of Israel. They were all dead and they were all buried. Uh, and it says in verse 10, it says, We're gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them. In other words, the next generation that knew not the Lord, or yet the works which he had done for Israel. Now, that's all I want to read today. And the thought today um, is this, will the next generation know. Now that's what I'm preaching about today. What will the next generation know? I begin to think about the Word of God and, and I begin to think about um, you know previous chapters and about um, how the children of Israel had came over Jordan and about um, how they had went around Jericho and, and a lot of great things had happened, right? And so um, the Bible said now I want you to know something today. This next generation that I'm going to preach about today, um, if they don't know, it's nobody's fault but mine and yours today. Now, is everybody on the same page now? Uh, now you're thinking already. You're thinking, oh boy, here we go. Now I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you today. If Paxton grows up uh, to be a heathen, it's nobody's fault but mine. Now that's just the way it is. I'm uh, willing to take that responsibility. Now I'm not going to tell you that um, he's going to be perfect and I'm not going to tell you that he's not going to tell a little fish in lie every now and then. And I'm not going to tell you um, that he's never going to do wrong. But what I'm telling you is, is that if he grows up uh, to be a downright heathen, it ain't nobody's fault but mine and his mother's. That's the way it works, okay? Everybody agreeing with me on that? Now, I hope you are. If you're not, you, you might as well just go ahead and go to your vehicle. You're not going to like the rest of my message. So um, it's nobody's fault but mine. Folks, if this next generation of born-again Christians and this next generation that are not born again, in other words, this next generation as a broad spectrum, if these next people coming behind us don't know about the Lord it's nobody's fault but mine and yours amen he said I give unto you the keys to the kingdom whatever you let loose down here be let loose up in heaven you know how the story goes and uh, so he said while I was here I was the light but I'm going to go away Keith and I'm going to leave you and I'm going to leave Bobby and I'm going to leave LC and I'm going to leave Chad uh, you get the picture right I'm going to leave every one of you all to be the light folks we've got a great job to do today. Do you all realize that? Uh, to train up a generation of boys and girls that uh, know about the ways of the Lord. If me and you don't do it today, I used to say, well, if I don't do it, somebody else will. It don't really work that way. If I don't do it, Satan will. That's just the way it is. The world will teach your children. I want you to know something today. I'm here to preach a message today on behalf of all of your children today on behalf of all of your grandchildren today that don't really have a voice that uh, don't really get heard I'm here preaching on their behalf today why because they deserve to know what's right they deserve to know what's wrong and they deserve somebody to lead them and to guide them and to help them amen there was a generation came up over in the book of Judges that didn't know about the Lord and that didn't know about who he was and didn't know about his miracles and didn't know about the great things that he'd done. Folks, it's up to you and I today to share with these children, to share with these youth what God has done for us today. Begin to think about the message. I want to share something with you today, and I hope and pray my little boys back there listening this morning. I I told him this morning. I said, Paxton. I said, uh, Dad's got a little something from God, a little message for you today. I want you to listen. He said, Well, he said, Dad, I won't play on the cell phone until you get done talking about my part. So, uh, listen. That's what he had to say this morning. I hope you'll listen for just a minute. I uh, a few Sunday mornings ago, folks. There's no way that this generation is going to know about what God has done for you and I if we don't tell them. Are you aware of that today? Uh, I began to think about a few Sundays ago. Now, I've not even shared this with his mother, but uh, a few Sundays ago, I called everybody on the altar and I said, everybody that um, has got a great need in their life, something that you just can't hardly deal with, let's come out. You all remember that. Let's all pray about that. Now, uh, you all didn't know this was going on inside of your preacher, but I was broken and I hadn't been sleeping and I... Uh, 
uh, was down and out. And uh, uh, see, the thing about it was Paxton had uh, threw up for about 14 days straight. He had threw up every time that he would eat. Now, you moms and dads, would that concern you a little bit? I got concerned about that, I'll be honest. And uh, so Paxton was allergic to milk and Paxton was allergic to wheat and Paxton was allergic to eggs and Paxton was allergic to peanuts. And uh, you can you imagine trying to feed a child like that? Me and his mother had been dealing with that. And I got to the end of my rope with that. And I'll be honest with you, the doctors couldn't help. Nobody else couldn't help. So I thought I'd just take it to God. Now, I'm going to tell you, God healed somebody right here at First Baptist Church a month ago. Now, uh, listen to me. Listen to how this plays out. I'm sharing with you something God did. We need to share with people uh, what God has done for us. I called everybody up here and I was right here on my knees crying out to God. And of course, I was at the end of my rope with that boy and I was praying and uh, Keith, the tears started rolling and then I just felt like that the biggest warm feeling come over me I've ever felt in my life. And so I thought felt like somebody was watching me. The next thing I know, Paxton's, little, I don't know where he come from, but his hands were inside of my hands and I heard him say, God help me. Now this is the fact, folks. If it's ain't a fact, God take me out of here. He said, God help me. And there was a voice that came out of that day and it said, Derek, I've healed him. Don't worry about it. Four weeks later, my child has eaten anything he wants to and he's not been sick a day. That's what God can do today. Do you all realize that? God healed my boy right here on this altar. I'm not just going to tell him today. I'm going to tell him in the future. Derek, that ain't something real big. You try feeding a kid that's allergic to everything. Amen? You try taking one that's puking every day and you deal with that. God healed him and I am thankful for it today. Amen? Praise the Lord. We need to tell people what God's done for us. That's the reason why this generation, amen, that the Bible's talking about didn't know about the Lord. Amen. People wouldn't tell him about what he had done. People wouldn't shine about Ain't you got something in your life that God has done you could be sharing with people? Amen. Hey, come on, First Baptist. Surely you got a story. Surely, 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 surely. Yeah, I'm going to get happy today. You've got something you can share with other people that God's done for you. So they'll know there's a Lord. Listen, folks, let's talk about our country a minute. Whatever, we've got to get back to the roots. You know what I mean? In the book of Genesis, the Bible said God created. God created, you hear what I just said, the heavens and the earth. And guess what? He made man. And he's like, you know what the Bible says about it. He made man. He created him. Amen. We need to get back to that. And you know what else? Listen to me. What about this? What about in God we trust? Amen. Is that something we are sharing with anybody today? Amen. In God we trust. Amen. It's still that way today. Amen. We, if you and I know, start sharing that with other people. Amen. Our little people, our young people. If, if we don't start teaching them that our trust. Man, it's more than my trust, Bobby. It's my hope. My hope is in the Lord today. Amen. My trust, Keith Rich, wasn't in the doctors that said, we don't know what to do. We'll give him this medicine. My trust got to where it was in the Lord. And God answered me. Folks, God still answers today. Amen. You believe it, I don't just believe it, I know it. Amen. We're going to have to start doing things a little different as a country. Amen. As a community. Amen. Oh, listen, this generation didn't know. I thought about uh, listen to me. What have happened to loving the Lord with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind? And what happened to loving your neighbor as yourself? Amen. Whatever happened to those days? Well, it's kind of like Cain and Abel was. You know what the Bible said. They offered the sacrifice and he slew his brother. And then the question was asked and he said, Am I my brother's keeper? 
What about it today, folks? I am responding. You know why I've got to preach that this is the mild part of my message today? Uh, listen, it's going to get <laughs> yeah, it's going to get hotter. But you know why I've got to preach this message today? Because I am responsible for this congregation. Amen. I, preacher, what do you mean you're responsible? I'm the under shepherd that God has put in this flock, and I'm responsible today. Amen. Let me ask you a question today. How come it is we got to incorporate prayer into our people today? Amen. How come it is today, and man, this one cut me the bone. How come it is when we're around church folk or when we're at Thanksgiving, we'll say the blessing. But when we eat a bologna sandwich, we just gobble it down. Amen. <laughs> Are you with me today? <laughs> Oh, my goodness, I didn't like that. Are you not thankful for that baloney? Hey Amen. Man, this one hurt me, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. I'm in a hurry and i got to eat because i got to do something else. That's what's wrong with our country today. Hey Amen. We have got to start praying again. Hey Amen. Oh, my goodness. Listen to me, folks. This generation that came up... God got angry with them. Amen. Oh, listen. What is this? This is where it gets tough. What is this? This is the Word of God. Amen. This is the Bible. Amen. Folks, if we don't start sharing the Word of God with other people, how are they going to know? Amen. Oh, you know why it's hard to share? Because we don't know it. Amen? You know why it's hard? To, listen, this, and this is where it gets tough. Now, uh, I want you to listen to me a minute. I want everybody in this building, if I got your attention right now pretty good, I want you to listen to me till I get done preaching this message before you turn me off, all right? I want you to listen to every word I say before you to form an opinion. I want you to listen to the whole message today, all right? Listen to what I said to start with. Will the next generation know? Do you all realize how much things are changing? Changing today. Are you aware of that? Go to the Bible bookstore today and go in there and try to get you a King James Version Bible. Amen. Everybody hold on. This is all right. I promise. God told me before I ever preach this message, if you say it exactly the way I want you to, it'll be all right. I'm going to say it exactly the way He wants me to. Let me ask you a question today, folks. I began to think about that, and so um, I got stirred up about that. And so, um, anyways, have you ever seen somebody that hated something just because somebody else did they ain't got no clue why they hate it but they hate it because everybody's a vapor locking right now they, let me ask you a question I've been here four years and it's been smooth as silk why do you doubt me at this point amen it's going to be smooth you hear me listen to me I went to the Bible bookstore and I got to trying to get me a Bible think about my message today alright now listen I tried to get me a Bible and I looked and there was a Bible and it was a parallel Bible alright and does anybody know what that is today some of y'all are about to rock me. Don't rock me till I get done, alright? Do not rock me till I get done preaching. Did you hear me? If you want to rock me, they ain't get you a handful. Don't rock me till I get done. Parallel. Let me ask you a question. Y'all want a preacher that can only preach two sermons? Huh? You ever seen a preacher he had two messages? One of them was hellfire and brimstone. Amen. And get saved or go to hell. Now that's a good message. But that'd get a little old after 10 or 15 years, right? Now the other one is change your ways. You're meaner than the devil's mama. Now that's a pretty good message too. But that'd get a little old too, wouldn't it? You see what I'm trying to say? God spoke to me and I realized I need more knowledge. Amen. I need to know more about the Word of God. I need to know more about why I believe what I believe. Amen. How many people in the congregation today has got a Bible dictionary? I want you to raise your hand. Don't be chicken. How huh? many people in the congregation today has got a study Bible? Don't be a chicken. I got some chickens in this congregation. Uh, I promise I get done, you ain't going to be able to say a word to me. Uh, all right, so how many 
people in the congregation, they's got a thesaurus. You know, book of synonyms and tells you kind of what other words mean. You know, substitutes. And so everybody's got one, right? I got that. I went ahead. Yeah, I bought it. Go ahead and get your rocks ready. I bought it. All right. I took it home and I began to read it. And whether you believe it or not, there's just some things I don't understand. I'll be honest. I, I, got, I got into the hardest book. I'm getting back to my message. Hang on a minute. I got in the hardest book I could find and I read it out of my King James on this line and it was two or three other translations over here. And I read that and I thought, man, I can't understand that. And then I just went over one line. I read it and man, it just exploded. Hey, Amen. It uh, gave me a new understanding. I can understand that verse that I couldn't understand before. You know what I'm trying to say? And so I thought, well, I thought that might be all right. Let me ask you something today. Is there anything wrong with studying? Is there anything wrong with wanting to know more? Huh? Now, by now, you've already formed an opinion about me before I got done, okay? Because uh, our preacher's got one of them other Bibles. Listen to me today. There ain't but one Word of God and I'm preaching out of it this morning. Amen. Amen. <sighs> would you rather your preacher try to learn more or would you rather him be like a thousand million of the other naysayers that when they get to a hard scripture, well, let's just skip it because I don't understand it and move on to something else. Huh? Now, I just picked a bunch in the congregation right there. I picked you, didn't I? Amen. Would you rather me just skip over everything I don't understand or would you rather me try to dig and try to learn and try to read? Amen. Now, listen to me. The other side ain't going to like this part. I got a set of drawings the other day. I'm a general contractor. And in that set of blueprints, there was about five pages missing. Huh? that I didn't know nothing about. And listen, this set of drawings is about like a Bible, I'll be honest. A lot of pages. You builders, you know what I'm talking about. You ladies that cook, how bad would it be if you was missing a few pages out of a cookbook? You see what I'm trying to say? I went ahead and I built that store with all them pages missing, and guess what? When it got time to do the punch list, I got fined several thousand dollars. Amen? Why? Because I was missing part of it. Amen? There is a translation of this Bible that comes in this church very often that is missing 40 verses and that is missing over 3,000 words. This is my message today, folks. Listen to me. You cannot afford to build your life, to build your family on something that is missing a bunch of pages. Amen? Are you always, is this a good enough message or not? Now, you cannot afford to build your your children's life on something that's missing a bunch of pages. Amen? I even got Keith Rich's amen. You can't afford to do it. Well, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you I got a King James Version Bible up here. I love it. I preach out of it. I teach out of it. And I'll study a lot of different ways. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Study, folks. Study, study, study. But build your life on something that's firm today. Amen. Did that come out all right? It come out to where you can't argue. I promise you that. This next generation, the way things are going, you and I keep cutting corners, keep taking stuff out, keep changing things. We can't do that. Do you hear me today? Your kids, by the time they get old enough to go buy a Bible, it'll be this then if we keep doing it. Amen? What's right is right and what's wrong. Golly, this is one of them. Man. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. And the Word of God is what it is today. You and I need to stand on it this morning. Amen. Help him, Lord, right. There was a generation that didn't know. I got tickled yeah, in Sunday school. Bobby Williams pointed this out. He said, you look on the news, and he said, there's all kinds of people pointing fingers at this and pointing fingers at that. And you know, it's, this is the problem in the country, and that's the problem in the country. Bobby said, we've got a seeing problem. Huh? What do you think about that? In other words, we don't see sin anymore, folks. Amen? Are you with me or not? 
What's right back then is still right today. God don't change His mind about things. Amen. I began to think about that. And I began to think about our country and about um, the different things and the different ways. Some of y'all are done with me, ain't you? I can tell you've done crossed your arms. I, I don't know how I'm on your side. Couldn't you tell? Amen. I was on your side. Amen. Now listen, we'll never, ever, ever, ever have to talk about that again, I hope. As long as I live, we'll never talk about that again, I hope. But listen, we can't compromise and got to build our life on things that are firm, all right? So listen to me. Now, the Bible teaches us that some things are right, some things are wrong. I'll be done in a minute. Everybody listen. Now, I want you to know something today. The Bible teaches us to be just in our dealings, amen? In other words, that means if I agree to do something for Bobby, that I need to follow through with it, amen? A man is only as good as his word today, amen? Now, that means... Get, let me just go ahead and pour the bucket on you. That means if dad's word ain't no good and Junior sees him falter, guess what Junior's going to do? Junior ain't going to pay his bills when he gets older. Junior ain't going to be just. You see what I'm trying to say today. We live in a country today where there is a lot of people that are unjust today. Amen? It's not acceptable, is it? Doesn't it go contrary to the Word of God? Amen? Let me ask you about this. What about anymore? It's all right to shack up, right? Huh? Uh, I told you I was going to preach. I hope you love me. Amen. Paul said marriage was honorable in all, and the bed was undefiled. Amen. Let me ask you a question. We live in a generation full of people that continue to go down that road, you know what I mean, living out of wedlock and continue to just keep sinning and just keep sinning. And, and you know what I'm trying to say. What's the next generation going to be like? Amen. There ain't going to be nobody getting married. They ain't going to... God, this is good. Ain't, ain't going to be nobody getting married. There ain't going to be no responsibility. There ain't going to be no respect. That's where it's at. Amen. When I grew up, guess what? Everybody was ma'am and sir. And you know what? I even try to get it in Paxton. I even try to do it with some of you all. It's Mr. Rich every time I talk to Keith, right? Hey, Amen. What about respect? This generation I'm preaching about today, where is the respect today? Hey, Amen. The respect for our elders, the respect for one another. Hey, Amen. And more than that, the respect for ourselves today. It's gone, right? Can you imagine where we're headed with that? Oh, I'm about done, I promise. I read the newspaper and I flip it open from time to time. You know what's in there? Of course, there's traffic citations. I always look at that. <laughs> you can see in there we're... <laughs> I'd be all right. This part probably needs edited anyway. There's divorce. You'll see it over there. Well, but ain't most of these people do it. Huh? A court? I want every single one of you divorced people listen to me. My mother, there ain't nobody in this world like my mother. Amen. <coughs> I love her. Even though she don't love your all's music, I love her. <laughs> to the end of forever. My mama's been divorced and remarried. Sometimes things happen in life that you can't do nothing about. Amen? Amen. Amen. I ain't rocking none of you divorced people. Don't get that in your head, alright? I love you. I appreciate you. More than that, I need you. Amen? That's right. There is room in God's house for divorced people. Amen? Amen. Now listen to me. But I want you know this, teaching our people that it's alright if it don't work out, just go get a divorce. That's not the right thing today. Amen? All these divorce people will tell you they went to their wits and trying to make things work. Amen? We cannot afford to raise up a generation of people that believe that a broken family is alright. Amen? You with me? Something was said to me the other day. 
What am I getting my permission to minister? Something was said to me the other day, one of our youth. Preacher, you don't even feel like our preacher no more. You feel like one of our friends. And I said, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I broke that barrier. Hallelujah. Being your preacher, guys, is way overrated. I don't want to be your preacher. I want to be your friend. Amen. Derek, why do you want to be a friend? Last night, sitting around the table at my house, I'm going to come to a close in a minute. Sitting around the table at my house with some dear friends. Started talking about the past and some of the stories got right. Have any of you boys ever caroused before Martin? Oh, well, you ever caroused? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to like this, Martin. This is for me. <laughs> These stories begin to surface about me, your preacher. And I think it blowed a few of them kids' mind. Oh, the preacher ripped people's mailboxes out of the ground. He drank and all that stuff. You know what that really means? That makes me certified to help and be able to talk to your young people. Amen? Yeah, sure. What do you think about it? We live in a society and these kids are going up. And listen, I'll just go ahead and breach it, throw it out there, whatever. There's pornography. Amen? There's abortions. Amen? You know why these girls get abortions? Because they're not getting any help at home. Amen? Because they're not getting help at the church. Amen? That's why you ought to like it or lump it. That's why they're doing it. They're not getting help from me in my friend. Amen. That's right. We can't raise up another generation like that. What about premarital sex? Yes, I said it out of the pulpit. Amen. Amen. I said it, guys, and I said it because I love you. Amen. Amen. Because I want to help you. Satan does not show you the end result of that. Amen. He doesn't show you whether you all like it or not. You guys are not very responsible. All right. <laughs> they're fine, men and women, but they're not very responsible. You know what I mean? Preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you they're not ready for a family yet. Amen. That's right. Amen. What about it? Down at the high school, if you went right now, there'd be all kinds of teenage girls in the school start back that are pregnant. Folks, we have got to make a stand and teach them this is wrong. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you with me? It's wrong, guys. I ain't gonna be around the bush about it. it. And you know what? You're human, and if you have problems with it, come talk to me about it. I promise you, I will not tell your mom and daddy nothing unless you tune him. <laughs> unless I have to. I want to be a friend to them. These group of kids, teenagers, need a friend. Yeah. Amen. Every one of you, Marvin. I'm picking Marvin out because Marvin don't care. I ain't never seen anybody in the congregation of a church building with any more potential, Marvin, than Marvin Hall. Amen? Well, Marvin, put, put the feathers in your hat, son. You ain't got no hair. Put them in your hat. You see what I'm trying to say? Every one of you have got so much potential. Don't waste it by keeping it bottled up. We and we cannot be like the children of Israel King and fail to share what God has done for us. We can... Listen, you all are a bit more uncomfortable than I am. I promise. I'm almost done. Whether you want to look at prayer life, whether you want to look at the Word of God, whether you want to look at the way you're living, whatever you want to look at. You know, there's a big elephant in the room. There's homosexuality and all. Folks, we have got to love those people. Y'all didn't like that, did you? Some of you all didn't like that. I said, according to the Word of God, you've got to love these people. Amen? I said that the blacks, the Indians, I'm talking about everybody that comes into your country. Now, I know we're going to build a wall, right? Y'all didn't even get that. <laughs> we're going to build a wall and we're going to use our land to build the wall. You know what I'm saying? It's up to you and 
desires Christian people to set the bar higher and to love everybody. Amen. Ooh, I'm about done. Come get you a song. You tell me, is the next generation going to know? I would say if you don't tell them nobody will, but that's a lie. It wouldn't be so bad, Bobby. If that was really true, because that means if you didn't tell Nick something, then it wouldn't be so bad because nobody else would. But reality is it don't work that way. Bobby, if you don't tell Nick, and you don't teach Nick, there's more to it than tell. Let me ask y'all if y'all realize something right. Your kids have no choice. I'm talking about little kids. Nick's got a choice. I'm talking about these little kids. Paxton, if I had not brought Paxton Drummonds to church this morning, would he have had any choice? Neither have choice either. Bobby said, Nick, did you get that? You ain't got no choice. <laughs> if I had not brought Paxton Drummonds to church today, he would have not had any choice. He would have had to stay at home. I'm preaching to some of you all that like to preach through those doors about once a month. Huh? I want to get down in your heart a minute and I want to talk to you. I choose not to bring that kid back to church. Guess what? He ain't going to have no choice. Marvin, I choose not to pray with that boy at bedtime. He's not going to have no choice. Marvin, if I choose to keep that boy at home, Marvin won't come back after this. <laughs> if I choose to not bring that boy back to church, and he's under conviction and needs to be saved, does he have any choice? I'm talking to you today. Your kids don't have much say so, and you've got all the say so. Are you going to train them up in the way they should go? What do you mean? Bobby Nick would have been here today whether you made it or not. True or false? Don't get in there, Bill. I should be here. <laughs> You're about to learn my message, Nicholas. <laughs> You know why? Because Bobby has trained him. They didn't keep training them. Everybody's saying I love you today. And if there's any doubt in your mind, I love you today. Look at all this sweat rolling off. <clears throat> but we cannot afford to sell for less like I preached last Sunday. It's up to you today. You need to change your life. You need to change the way you're living. You need to suck it up. And listen, all of you haters, let me say one more thing. There is nothing no worse than a hater that don't know why they hate. Amen? Amen. I don't hate that. I hate that. But all right. well, I hate them songs, right? You can see where I'm going, right? If you're going to hate it, at least know why you hate it, all right? While they're saying if you need to come, I want to pray for you. You young people, you've been venturing out too far in the world, and done things you should have done. God wants to forgive you today. Amen. He wants to give you a clean slate. Would you come pray?